Islands are usually remote and often stunningly beautiful locations dotted throughout oceans worldwide. They can provide the settings for exotic holidays with awe-inspiring landscapes. However, they can also be the site of strange occurrences or baffling mysteries. Here are islands with enigmatic phenomena that remain unexplained to this day. Tenerife Island Tenerife, the most populated of Spain's Canary Islands, is the location of Barranco de Badajo, a ravine where several guanche mummies have been discovered. While the majority of the indigenous Berber mummies, which date back to the 3rd century AD, have been lost to desecration and looting, the findings make it an important area for archaeologists. However, the numerous accounts of eerie and paranormal phenomena overshadow its academic significance. Some travellers to the ravine have reported experience in time seeming to stand still come nightfall when watches mysteriously stop working. Others have witnessed the appearance of bizarre moving lights flitting above and throughout the ravine, while some have even claimed to see tall angelic beings draped in white robes. One frequently recurring account is told by locals of a strange occurrence which took place during the late 19th century. A girl was sent by her parents into the ravine to search for fruit, only to vanish into thin air. The whole canyon was scoured, but the search parties found no evidence of the girl's whereabouts or what had befallen her, and the rescue missions were eventually called off. Twenty years later, the so-called girl of the pears suddenly reappeared and looking exactly the same as though having not aged a day since a strange disappearance two decades earlier. The girl reassured those around her that she'd only been away for a few hours and was astonished to hear that twenty years had passed. Great Barrier Island This idyllic New Zealand island paradise also harbours some dark secrets. In September 1997, a well-loved local resident called Nancy Frey Hershey mysteriously disappeared. The American woman, who was in her late 40s and planning to acquire residency in New Zealand, had skipped some scheduled appointments and reported to police as missing. Her house was found with its front door open and still containing all her valuables. A berry cardigan and gumboots were found on a steep cliff face near a home, suggesting a fall, but it was queried as to why she would have been wearing gumboots when climbing. It appears as if the clothing had been placed there, particularly as the cardigan sleeves are inside out. Foul play was suspected by police, but no further evidence or suspects were ever found, and Nancy was declared deceased two years later. Her friends established a memorial plaque while they planted a native Ahutakawa tree, normally a huge spreading tree 20 metres high. Strangely, Nancy's tree had not grown a single centimetre since it was planted in the late 1990s. On the 30th of June 1999, the remains of reclusive 51-year-old Colin Michael Good was found in his isolated home near Clarisse on Great Barrier Island. Good's right hand had been removed and the remains of his doll were lying beside him on his bed. Good had last been seen two months before the discovery. A former council gardener, he was a known cannabis grower and had been subject to a nasty robbery of money and cannabis in 1991. While two rifles were found near him in his bedroom, it was soon determined that Good had not passed of gunshot wounds. Strangely, no cause of his demise was ever established, despite extensive and thorough post-mortem investigations. The case has grown cold over the years and remains without any suspects ever identified or apprehended. Hawaii There are many eerie tales of paranormal sightings surrounding the idyllic paradise of Hawaii. However, the real-life unsolved mysteries are just as chilling. One case involves Diane Suzuki, a 19-year-old dance instructor who was living in Halawa in 1985. She was working at the Rosalie Woodson Dance Academy and dating a man called Lester Ganton. Diane had been planning a trip to the North Shore of Oahu after work on Saturday, July the 6th. Her last class finished at 3pm and 50 minutes later, a friend came to the academy to pick her up. However, Diane could not be found. A cart was still in the spot where she had parked that morning and her keys and purse were all still inside. After Diane's parents were informed of the door's disappearance, they staked out near the academy in their car, in the hope that she would appear. 
During their stay there, they observed a man named Dewey Hamasaki, with his father and sister carrying a trunk and placing it in a vehicle. Dewey, who worked as a photographer at the academy, was thought to have had a crush on Diane and had been present when she taught her last lesson. Dewey was interrogated and the marsh around his house searched, but no evidence was found to enable his arrest. Five and a half years later, clothing resembling that worn by Dan on the day she disappeared was discovered on a pig farm owned by Dewey's father. With this new evidence, the Hamasaki family members, as well as about 100 witnesses, were summoned for a grand jury, but frustratingly, the court still refused to press charges. No trace of Diane Suzuki has ever been found, and her mother passed in 1997 without ever knowing the truth about her daughter's disappearance. Flores Island In 2003, fossils of a miniature hominid named Homo floresiensis were discovered on Flores Island in Indonesia. The skeletons were so small that the humans they originated from were dubbed the hobbits of Flores Island. The discovery quickly sparked controversy and debate over whether the fossils were evidence of an unknown branch of early humans or simply humans impacted by genetic birth defects due to inbreeding or insular dwarfism, which is when size decreases because of restricted resources in an island ecosystem. During their existence, these diminutive individuals stood at less than four feet tall and their brains were one-third the size of modern human brains. Despite this, however, they hunted, used fire, produced homemade stone tools and ventured thousands of miles across the ocean to settle on their island home. With their skeletal remains, now dated from 60 to 100,000 years ago, it is thought that they may have had contact with our own species, because Homo sapiens are believed to have reached Australia around 65,000 years ago. However, the origin of the so-called hobbits remains a mystery, as does their fate. It is still to be determined where exactly they fit into the human evolutionary tree, and what brought about their disappearance. Santa Cruz Island Dr. Carey Q. Stanton was an eccentric bachelor who eventually left New York in 1957 to reside on his family's ranch, which he came to inherit on Santa Cruz Island. On the few occasions he had visitors staying at the ranch, he would live according to a strict schedule and expect his guests to also follow it. Dinner would be eaten at 7.30pm, coffee and oatmeal cookies served at 8.30pm, and then he would punctually retire to bed at 9pm. Staten passed on the 8th of December 1987, and the island's private cemetery provided his last resting place. His will instructed that the ranch be taken over by the Native Conservancy, who would ensure pristine preservation of the island. Curiously, in April 1990, a metal box was found in his shed on the ranch. It contained human remains, so severely decomposed that they were reduced to mainly ashes. Amongst the fragments were a set of false teeth made in the 1950s, a clothing press stud dating back to the 1940s, and a diamond-studded platinum ring from before the Second World War. Forensic tests on the organic matter established that it belonged to a woman aged over 50 and with mild arthritis, who probably passed of natural causes soon after the war. While Stanton was never attributed with culpability for the woman's demise, it remained a mystery as to why her remains were in a metal box on the ranch, and who she was, as she has never been identified. 